pray very hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the country, bring in peace, bring prosperity, and uh, eradicate poverty in the land. President Buhari begins second tenor seeking divine intervention as he performs Umrah ahead of OIC summit in Saudi Arabia. Clear the air and save the lungs. Health experts want enforcement of laws banning tobacco use in public areas. Foster first spirit corps and enhance professionalism of officers and soldiers in any theater of oppression. Army adopts indigenous language to boost intelligence gathering. It's not just resolving conflicts, but it's to prevent conflicts. West African countries to domesticate laws on arms and weapons proliferation. Hello, welcome to NTA Network News, reaching you live from Abuja. I am Jumwa Yusuf, Jennifer Igwe is in Lagos, and Mariam Adura is in our Just Network Center. Thanks for joining us. We start the news today with the president's visit to Saudi Arabia as barely 36 hours after his inauguration for his second term in office, President Muhammad Buhari has returned to the Grand Kaaba in the holy city of Mecca. His mission, not only to intercede for Nigeria, but also seek divine guidance in the execution of his mandate for a secured, peaceful, united and prosperous Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports. Although President Muhammad Buhari is in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the summit of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation with the holy city of Mecca as the venue and the Grand Kaaba just nearby, maximum benefits of the visit must be derived for both personal and greater national interest. <laughs> President Buhari is here to once again perform the lesser hajj, an act of great significance for the sake of Allah and therefore highly pleasing to him. Consequently, sins are not only forgiven here, but all prayer requests are considered granted. For the Nigerian leader, still basking in the euphoria of his inauguration for another term of office, it is one opportunity that cannot be misused. Therefore, apart from Thawaf, or circumambulation of Kaaba, the president accompanied by, amongst others, the governors of Jigawa, Niger, and Oshun states also performed Sai between the mountains of Safa and Marwa. He walked, and indeed run where necessary, in compliance with the Islamic injunction, during which intermittent prayers were offered to Allah for the nation and its present leadership. Throughout the laser hatch, president was busy praying for Nigeria bit by bit from each stage to another for Almighty Allah's intervention to intervene in our country and make it much, much easier for him to take the country to the next level. So how significant is the president's prayer for Nigeria? It's very important because of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that responsibility. Because of that responsibility, when he prays, there is high probability that his prayer Prayer will be accepted and among the prayers that are accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the prayer of a, a righteous and just leader. This is the second time in less than three weeks President Muhammad Buhari is performing the lesser hajj but not the three governors on his entourage. So what have been their prayers to Allah at this point in time? There is prayer for peace for the entire country and prosperity. Uh, we are aware of the economic challenges and we pray very hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the country bring in peace, bring prosperity, and uh, eradicate poverty in the land. Uh, I pray for our president, Muhammad Bahari, for Allah to give him the strength to uh, rule Nigeria properly in the right direction. Uh, I pray for Nigeria as a whole, uh, for peace, uh, in view of the present uh, security challenges facing us. And uh, inshallah, uh, we are very hopeful that Allah will answer our prayers. We will continue to pray hard to have a peaceful uh, environment. Because without peace and security, uh, virtually all other sectors of development will not function. I congratulate Mr. President for taking it uh, as a matter of duty to come and say Alhamdulillah to God after this swearing. My prayer is that uh, by the grace of Almighty God, 
our president will do better than what he did in the first term. Challenges are there in the country, particularly in the area of security. But Allah will see us through. We want peace in Nigeria. We want prosperity in Nigeria. And I believe with this, the start of this tenor, with uh, God be on our side, the president will do very well. The lesser Hajj is the first major undertaking by President Muhammad Buhari on the margins of the OIC summit in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. From Mecca, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Back home, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arranged three officials of Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAM, from Benue and Plata states before the Federal Capital Territory High Court sitting in Maitama for alleged criminal breach of trust and corruption. Among the three is Philomena Chise, who alleged that a snake swallowed the sum of 33 million naira in Mukurdi, Benue State Zonal Office. The two officials from Benue State are standing trial on eight count charge, while the other officer from Plata State is standing trial on four count charge for their refusal to inform relevant authorities the financial status of jump e card sales supplied to both states between 2014 and 2016. The three officials pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Consequently, the prosecution counsel applied for trial date and that they should be remanded in prison custody. This was objected by the defendant's counsel and informed the court that they have already submitted bail applications. The presiding Judge Justice Peter Affen reminded the defendants in EFCC custody pending the outcome of their motion on bail is heard and determined on the 3rd of June. With the growing sophistication in financial crimes in developing nations like Nigeria, the use of forensic accounting investigation has become imperative. To this end, the Chartered Institute of Forensic and Investigative Personal Professionals of Nigeria is calling for a legal backing to enable it discharge its duties effectively, Ignatius Unko reports. Investigation has been known to be more effective in the fight against corruption, especially in financial impropriety. This kind of investigation adopts a scientific approach to financial crime detection through high-level intelligence gathering. The coming on board of the Chartered Institute of Forensic and Investigative Professionals of Nigeria in 2014 appear to have placed Nigeria among nations that have embraced forensic accounting in crime investigation. But the major challenge to this anti-corruption institute is that it lacks legal backing. But the 8th National Assembly, in its wisdom, has passed a bill seeking to establish the institute, which now awaits presidential assent. I call on Mr. President Muhammad Buhari to give assent to the bill for an act to establish the Chartered Institute of Forensic and Investigative Professionals of Nigeria. Thank you. It is expected that the signing into law of the bill will put a stop to the huge amount of money Nigeria spends on hiring foreign forensic experts. It strengthens existing fraud professional mechanisms and institutional frameworks with a view to bringing them up to global standards. The Institute further explained that its mandate does not contravene or interfere with the functions of any professional body in Nigeria. Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. With the passage of the National Tobacco Control Regulations by the National Assembly, relevant players in the health sector advocating enforcement of the law to protect children. This was the emphasis at an event to mark the world No Tobacco Day in Abuja. Elizabeth Mori reports. This young star is Shana Wale. He picked up a smoking habit at a very young age, but was lucky to get help to overcome it. Not many are such lucky. Some feel that if they have been under pressure or be stressful, they decide to embark on smoking. As they grow older or their lungs have been affected, you see they begin to smoke so badly. And I could see regret in them. You know, as a psychology, each time you see them cough, very strong cough, <coughs> it affects and they, they lose their weight. And so, Millions still engage in this dangerous habit that not only affects them, but also others who perceive such smoke. A World Health Organization report shows that tobacco smoking is responsible for the deaths of about 600,000 people annually, a development that makes the world to choose this day to enlighten the populace on the dangers of tobacco smoking. 
Like in many countries, Nigeria also has national tobacco control regulations prohibiting smoking in public places. Sell or offer of sale of or distribution of tobacco or tobacco products through mail, internet or other online devices is also prohibited. Owner or manager who permits encourage or encourage fans to stop smoking any place while smoking is reported shall be prosecuted. Enforcing the law, which stipulates 14 years imprisonment for violation, is seen as a solution to check public smoking. Sensitization is also believed to be key to clear the air and save the lungs. Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. The U.S. African Action Against Small Arms is advocating the need for a national survey on small arms and light weapons in the country. Doing India reports that this is to stem the tide of gun violence in Nigeria. Millions of small arms and light weapons traded by unlicensed persons are said to infiltrate into Nigeria, mostly from neighboring countries. Such weapons find their ways into wrong hands, resulting in violent crimes like robbery, kidnapping, gangsterism, banditry and terrorism, as well as fueling communal conflicts, threatening the peace and stability of the country. The West African Action Network on Small Arms and Light Weapons, a coalition of civil society organizations, is one of the NGOs campaigning to stop the trend. It has got a ready partner in the National Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution and working towards the formulation and domestication of gun law. Because we're all affected one way or the other, we're all casualties. Because if you cannot carry out your business, the women cannot go to the farms anymore. The men cannot go to farms because they are afraid. This is worrisome. Essentially, our job is not just resolving conflicts, but is to prevent conflicts and thereby making sure that, sec that security is maintained through development. So, and so when we work together, we'll be able to have impacts. With the law and synergy between state actors, NGOs, CBOs and local communities, Nigeria and indeed West Africa can control illegal weapons and reduce gun violence to the barest minimum. In Abuja, doing DIA, NT News. The federal government has declared Tuesday 4th and Wednesday 5th, June 2019 as public holidays to mark the Muslim Eid al-Fitr celebration. A statement from the Ministry of Interior directs security agencies on the, the ministry to ensure the provision of adequate security before, during and after the Eid al-Fitr celebration. This statement also congratulates the Muslim faithful on a successful completion of Ramadan fast and enjoined all Nigerians to use the occasion to pray for the peace, unity, prosperity and stability of the nation. It's time to take our first breather. More news after this time out. In all the cities and all the streets, in all the places where people meet, from Niger to yonder, we got you talking. With five times bonus to call all networks on every recharge, we get you talking. Keep talking. Glow Unlimited. On behalf of my family and the good people of Niger State, I, the Niger State Governor, Abu Bakr Bello, wish to felicitate with President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, and Commander-in-Chief of Nigeria Armed Forces, and the Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, for their successful inauguration ceremony for a second term in office. Mr. President Saw, the overwhelming show of support for your second term is a testament to your uprightness, doggedness, and the people's belief in your policies that have endured the country in the Committee of Nations. May God grant you more wisdom as you work towards taking Nigeria to greater heights. 
Once again, congratulations. Long live Niger State. Long live the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Announcer 2019 Niger State Inaugural Committee. Getting around heartburn and indigestion can be tricky if you eat too much. Eat food that is too spicy or greasy or lie down after eating. Heartburn and indigestion could always be around the corner. When they come, be prepared with Gaddis Con Double Action. It works within three minutes and lasts up to four hours. Gaddis Con Double Action. Many causes, one solution. It's Ramadan. It's okay to share what you love. Ramadan Kareem from Indomie. Indomie Super Pack, now available at 85 Naira. Mr. Shebu, are you okay? I haven't paid so. It has been like this for the past one week. Let me assist you to the hospital. You can't continue like this alone. No, 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 no. I want to go and see Baba Muslimi to give me some Haba Mistra so that I can take. Because this hospital, the way they treat person, I'm not going to the hospital. Mr. Shegu, that was in the past. With new patients' bill of rights, patients have the right to an urgent, immediate, and sufficient intervention and care. A right to complain and experience the satisfaction. We are the necessary. With the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, your consumer's rights are protected. To lay your complaint, please contact any of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission's FCCPC offices closest to you with your complaints. You can also call our helplines at 0805-600-2020 or 0805-600-3030. Please, let us go to the hospital. I'd like to experience this for science. At FCCPC, you can rely on us to resolve your complaints effectively and efficiently. On behalf of grassroots mobilization for APC Nationwide, Hajia Hawa Bagu wishes to congratulate President Muhammad Buhari, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Force, on a second term inauguration in office. We wish you continued success and strength in performing your duties in office to enable you consolidate on the people's oriented projects your administration embarks on. One football confederation, 24 teams, six stadiums, four cities, 504 African stars, one trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations, Egypt 2019, comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Heart Sports. Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. Nigeria's premier sports production and marketing group, Hot Sports partners with the biggest, the largest and the number one television network in Africa, the NTA, to give Nigerians a memorable viewing experience. Boost fan support for the Super Eagles to glory in Egypt. For inquiries, please contact Obubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. ANTA, you can't beat the rich. This is NTA Network News reaching you live from Abuja. Thanks for staying. The Nigerian Navy says it will persist in performing infrastructural development projects aimed at complementing its operational, administrative and welfare objectives. This was made known at the groundbreaking ceremony of places of worship at Navy Town, Asokoro in Abuja. Correspondent Naja Atu Tijani reports. Nation stones for the erection of places of worship as laid by the Chief of Naval Staff who says the act signifies laying the foundation for the spiritual and moral development of the Nigerian Navy and armed forces of Nigeria. This will enable him to retain a rotational, rational balance needed for the effective employment of his physical competencies to achieve victory in battle. The onus is therefore on our spiritual leaders to ensure that on completion 
these centers will serve the intended purpose. Vice Admiral Ibaz believes their challenges, including the spate of insecurity in some parts of Nigeria, aggravated by misguided youth, can be partly surmounted with the emotional stability and moral courage which these places of worship are expected to provide. The Navy says it will continue to build the character of its officers and ratings for the greater good. Najaa Tijani, NTA News. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, has deployed 36,000 personnel across the country to ensure a heat-free movement during the Sala celebration. Corps Public Education Officer B.C. Kazim made this known at the Mega Rally for the Idil Fitul celebration at Dankwogi Park, Zuba Abuja. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. Seasons are usually characterized by human and vehicular movement traveling across the country. With anticipated traffic volumes and reckless driving, it is often bedeviled with car crashes leading to fatalities. The Federal Safety Corps is not unaware of this challenge. As part of its strategies to minimize the trend as either Fitri approaches, the Corps is coming hard on road traffic offenders. The road is patient, but it doesn't forgive. You can misbehave for 100 years on the road, but when the world intends to pay back, in a minute you will be no more. They should always endeavor to make sure that they use uh, very good uh, parts in their vehicle so that they can save their life and save other motorists. We promise to comply with all the instructions, especially on the road traffic rules and regulation. In a patrol that would last nine days, the FRSC is collaborating with different security and road management agencies to ensure 24 hours patrol with the hope of reducing road crashes by 20% and fatalities by 25% across the 52 corridors of the country. In Abuja, Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. To better equip officers and men of the Nigerian army with tools for intelligence gathering and effective communication in the discharge of their duties, the National Institute for Cultural Orientation has introduced a program tagged Indigenous Languages to the Barracks for officers and men of the armed forces. Gufa and Shaji reports that this program is also designed to break language barriers and enable officers penetrate certain localities to ensure the protection of lives and property. Some of the security challenges facing the nation, what would you do as an individual when you find yourself in a different part of the country that speaks an entirely different language from that which you understand? Well, this gathering here is being brought by the National Institute of Cultural Orientation to some of the offices to help them find solutions and of course be able to communicate when they find themselves in different parts of the country. These officers of the Nigerian army speak different indigenous languages, but need to communicate in other languages, especially where the official English language is not spoken. That will enable them to effectively discharge their duties and have information from the natives where they are carrying out combatant operations. Supposed to foster first spirit corps and enhance professionalism of officers and soldiers in any theater of oppression, especially within the country. We should take it to them because it's easier for us to bring the language to the barracks than for them to attend you know, in our offices. The new initiative to take indigenous languages to the barrack is expected to also enhance the military civil relationship. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTN News. Professor Gumbe Vicky Sylvester wants literary writers to use their creativity as a tool to prefer solutions to socio-economic problems. This was at the 36th inaugural lecture at the University of Abuja titled Politics of Literature. Elizabeth Omori reports. Globally, insecurity, corruption 
kidnapping, and many other negative factors hamper the economic prosperity of any nation. Hence the need for prolific writers to use their creativity to prefer lifelong solutions. This inaugural lecture was an eye-opener for writers, students and the general public on how to constructively come up with means of addressing issues negating growth of the nation without hitting up the polity. Professor Gwimbe Vicky Sylvester, while highlighting the role of literature in promoting language, culture and politics, explained that literary works such as Half of a Yellow Sun, A Long Walk to Freedom, Tenants of the House and Things Fall Apart have been able to document history through thought-provoking lines and plots which have helped shape ideologies. There's a lot of people have no money to publish good books and they print and keep in the room. So government should encourage through the right publishing houses. Writers were also urged to be objective. We expect them to write more on the beneficial side of things and not just chronicle the, the bad sides of war and problems in the country. They can use literature also to highlight the good parts of the country and the good things that happen in the country. In that way, they can help to reduce the problems in the country. Uh, literature is a mirror on our society, so we take the lessons from there and apply it to our daily lives. The academics recommended that Pidgin English be made one of the national languages and the government should promote cultural festivals for posterity. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NTA News. Time now to join Jennifer in our Lagos studio for more reports on NTA Network News. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Jumei, and welcome to Lagos. Now, Chief of the Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Ibok Ekwe Ibas has inaugurated several projects in Lagos, including the remodeled Naval Dockyard Apprenticeship Training School, which will serve as a hub of engineering excellence and local technology development. Dotsun Oguyemi reports. Fleet renewal, adequate logistics, and regular capacity building have been responsible for the successes recorded by the Nigerian Navy. These 10 Liberty buses and 16 hillocks are among the 130 vehicles procured in the last one year. Also commissioned were the new NNS Pickcroft Jetty, a 25-man houseboat built by naval engineers, and the remodeled Naval Dockyard Apprentice Ship Training School as part of a broader goal and the Navy's 2011-2020 to transformational plan. The Nigerian Navy has proven to be a reckonable force in the areas of capacity building and job creation. Accordingly, as the Nigerian Navy marks her 63rd anniversary, the service is honored to unveil and induct this milestone in infrastructure and assets into the Nigerian Navy inventory. A 250-ton capacity slipway is still under construction at NNS Bickroft, while more projects are soon to be commissioned at the Navy town or job in Lagos, Dotson, Oguemi, NTA News. A strict traffic management on the various access roads to Tinkan and Apapa ports should be considered by the federal and Lagos state governments to decongest the area. Some truck owners and tanker drivers are of the view that it will help in restricting articulated vehicles that have no business in the ports from gaining access. Paul Omukago tells us more. The queue of articulated vehicles parked on bridges and roads contributes to gridlocks in different parts of Lagos. While some of them have genuine reasons for moving into the port area, quite a good number of them are just there with no specific consignment to deliver or carry. This is one of the reasons for the obstruction of traffic in Apapa. You have to pay some local unions on the road in which you have, if you can't pay, you are not going. Your, your truck will be parked one side. Either they deflect your tire or you have to call someone to bail you out. The challenge is that all these containers, they don't have anywhere to go. So when the road has blocked, nobody, the, the law enforcement, they will not pass my truck. They are just there for nothing. Many of them are looking for work to carry. That's how they park. And from, that, from this place to that side there, 
to uh, area B, they pack double. So there is no any, any way for the other uh, vehicle to come in. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Babajide Saolu was in a papa for on-the-spot assessment of the situation. A promise to collaborate with the Presidential Tax Force on removal of trucks to address the phenomenon of gridlock. He said a 1,000 capacity trailer park will be ready soon. You know they've started building the road from Wharf Road. Now they are at Creek Road. So what we're going to tell the controller of works is that they should push it in faces. This access road and bridge is one of many infrastructure recently completed. The use of this facility built to accommodate 350 trucks is one way of decongesting the port area in Tinkan and Apapa. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. Thank you, Paul. Now time to join Abolade Salami for business news. Abolade, over to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Good evening and welcome to the business news segment. The fact behind this sustainability report by the Nigerian Stock Exchange will afford investors the details of listed companies and their sustainability reports in order to determine risk and returns of the listed companies. Head Shares Services Division, Nigerian Stock Exchange, Bola Adiako, at the maiden edition of the report, said the initiative is strategic to the growth of the capital markets. In view of delivering value to its listed companies and the investing public, as well as to support Nigerian economic growth, the Nigerian Stock Exchange will continue to emphasize the importance of sustainable business practice in the country. The exchange noted that since the introduction of the premium board, the growth of NSE premium index has continued to outperform the benchmark NSE All Share Index by 85% compared to All Share Index of 42% as at April 2018. Therefore, this decision is timely as well as strategic to the growth of the capital market as more stakeholders are now aware that the promotion and disclosures of environmental, social, and governance principles can indeed facilitate more meaningful engagement between investors and listed companies. The sustainability report will further help reposition the Nigerian Stock Exchange through its far-reaching and transformation policies aimed at strengthening corporate governance of listed companies. And still staying on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the Nigerian equities market could not sustain its rally as it dropped 0.59% to end last trading day of May in red. Here is today's details. Friday's trading saw the market dip by 0.59% to close the all share index at 31,069.37 basis points. Volume of shares traded were 212 million, valued at 2.7 billion naira, which exchanged hands in 3,737 deals, and a market capitalization of 13.6 trillion naira. CCNN, Dangote Flour, and Fort Oil closed the month in green while Nestle, Nigerian Buries, and Guinness finished in the red. On sectoral performance, NSE Industrial and NSE Insurance ended in the green territory by 0.32% and 2.96%, while NSE Banking, Consumer Goods, and NSE Oil & Gas closed in the red, depreciating by 1.73%, 1.05%, and 1.06%. And that's a... And that's a wrap on business news. The news continues after this short commercial break. Please stay with us. Data. We can't live without it. Share it. Sell with it. Borrow it. Up here, calm down, breathe. Celebrate with it. Breathe easy. Data is oxygen. Glow 4G, the new speed of life. Your number one 4G network nationwide. The very best from Glow, the grandmasters of data. Love is a kiss when you 
Can your milk do this? Can your milk do this? Mine can. With Hollandia evaporated milk, your ice cream, custards, and variations of beverages taste pleasantly different. Hollandia evaporated milk. Life tastes different. From the house of Chi. I thought leaving the country was the best decision for me and my future. I left for a better life. We were picked up by immigration officials and sent to a detention camp. I spent eight months in the detention camp. There was no food, no water. I saw people being beaten like animals. Some women were raped. Some women were sold as slaves. I thought I would never see my loved ones again. I have made the biggest mistake of my life. I have wasted all my savings. I have to start all over again. Migration is a human phenomenon which cannot be stopped. But if we choose to migrate, we advocate that it should be done in a safe, orderly, regular and dignified way, and not in a dangerous and tortuous manner. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. <laughs> You are watching NTA Network News. Two clerics have started receiving their rewards since from here on earth for adhering to divine directive to protect life irrespective of the fate or race of the owner. Monso Damien Dekti reports. Uh, five days, uh, those who ran into the mosque, uh, because they wanted to uh, continue to protect them, they didn't want them exposed, the Muslims had to pray outside the mosque so that those in the mosque can continue to have the protection. The story of Imam Abdullahi Abubakar, who took great risks to save the lives of hundreds of Christians when gunmen invaded their village in Plato State, hunting for people from that faith to kill, came to many as surprise due to the long history of sectarian crisis in that state. It's around 4 o'clock that we started hearing gun shooting from a village called in the Aquati. That is excellent. Then we saw people running. We started calling them back, telling them, come back, come and enter the mosque, come and enter the mosque. So when I went, went out, I found Imam there lying down on the ground, begging the people not to enter the house. If they will enter, so let them kill him first before they enter his house and kill those that are in the house. Do it according to the teaching of Quran, that people, those, even those that are not your religion, if they came to you in order to secure them, you have to secure them. It's a lesson not just for Nigeria, but for all mankind. One family, one race, one love. The heroic act of love and sacrifice exhibited by the Imam and his deputy has not gone unnoticed as they continue to be acknowledged. The Imam Abdullahi Abubakar, in recognition of your extraordinary bravery, putting your faith into action on June 23rd, 2018. That day, you saved the lives of hundreds of your Christian neighbors in your village, Barkanladi, Plateau State. The National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, says it will henceforth include the name, the date of birth of core members on the Certificate of National Service. Director General of the NYSC, Brigadier General Shaibu Ibrahim, said this while responding to questions on the outcome of the three-day workshop with stakeholders in Abuja. Olainka Oju reports. During the 2019 NYSC by BP mobilization workshop with stakeholders, the issues of mobilization of unqualified graduates by co producing institutions and that of disparity in the date of birth of prospective core members took the front burner. At the end of the meeting, stakeholders unanimously agreed for the date of birth of youth core members to be included on their certificates. The issue of the age inscribed in the NYC certificate will checkmate issue of corruption in terms of age declaration. It's have to prevent falsification of age. Because already the people that are supposed to go on retirement, they are still on it. Over time, people have seen the National Youth Service Corps scheme as a stopgap for employment. So they falsify their age. 
This has led to some youths participating in the scheme more than once. Imagine the cost implication of somebody being mobilized twice, three times, and uh, somebody with fake, uh, fake age coming on board the scheme. Uh, he's going to add additional burden in terms of funding to us, and that's why we are very serious about it. The NYC Director General also appealed to the National Examination Council, NECO, National Business and Technical Examination Board, NAPTEP, and other examination bodies to key into the initiative, like the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, by inscribing the dates of birth on certificates. Alainka Ujo, NTA News. The Social Welfare Services of the Federal Capital Territory is notifying the public that Mrs. Adedeke Ukoma is seeking to reconnect with her family from Isoya Quarters, Ubuluku, and Nyocha local government area of Delta State. A statement from the department notes that Mrs. Ukoma, who is a victim of hit and run accident along Jabi Road, Abuja, has been receiving treatment at Guarimpa General Hospital since the 15th of January 2019. Now fully recovered and discharged, she seems not to know her whereabouts, so she remains at the hospital's female ward. The agency is asking her relatives or any person who recognizes her to call this number 080 I'll take the number again 080 or contact the management of Guarimpa General Hospital or Life Camp Police Station, Abuja. Time now to join Mariam in Jaws for more reports on NTA Network News. Hello, Mariam. Hello, Jemai. Good evening. It's good to have you join us. With the takeoff of the second term of the APC administration in Plateau State, a cross-section of people have expressed the hope that the current urban renewal program, road construction, and the agricultural revolution program will be given top priority. Felicia Dali of Samaila said the views of opinion leaders on these issues and more as the whistle blows for the second term of the Lalong administration. The governor who has been in office for the past four years came up with five policy thrusts to include peace, security and good governance, human capital development and social welfare, agriculture and rural development, entrepreneurship and industrialization, as well as physical infrastructure and environment. Voices have come together to applaud the giant strides of the Lalong administration. We are praying for him that he will, together with his team, be able to translate all these ideas into concrete practice. I see hope. I see a brighter future for the people of Plato City. Community leaders were also unanimous in their views that agriculture, security, road network, and education, if given the desired attention, would bring about positive changes. We will love for him to remember the security challenges that are still very prevalent with us and to put together the security agencies so that these manners will be handled once and for all. There's the need for developmental strife to go down to the rural areas, most especially in terms of roads, roads constructions, and the provisions of water. The administration is expressing commitment to new roadmap that will embrace all and boost infrastructural development in the state. In Jos, Felicia Dali of Samaila, NTA News. The Almadri, the Almadri Child Rights Initiative, a non-governmental organization that caters for the Almadris, is advocating for a robust government policy and legislation for the welfare of the children. The body organized an outreach program for over 100 Almadris on the streets around Nayaguta community of just north local government area of Plateau State. Abdul Wahab Babon Kanti takes it from here. The Almadri Child's Rights Initiative is passionate enough to identify this category of people to assist them with some basic needs. The initiative advocated for the Almadri child to be given equal right to education, shelter, food, water, health facilities, as well as other social amenities, and also call on well-meaning individuals to come to the aid of the Almadris. 
for ringworm. And then we are giving them toothbrush and toothpaste to explain to them how to use it. And then as well, we are giving them soaps. We are also giving them sponges to enable them maintain personal hygiene. The head of Naraguta community applauded the initiative for the kind gesture and also call on government to come up with design policy that will address issues and challenges of Almajri in Nigeria. This Almajri issue, it has a very uh, complicated situation. Even in the religious aspect, the Muslim we are looking, some are looking, it is not good to send child like that to beg for food before he land. Because it's like you are just abandoning the child. The Almajris were given free medical treatment, cloth and food. It just up Dunhubaban Kanti and tenus. That's all we have from here. Jumai is back to you for what's left of the news. Good evening. In fulfillment of the promises he made during the 2019 electioneering campaigns, Vice President Yemi Osibajo late Friday afternoon paid a visit to the family of Baba Alaganzi Gazangzi, a 106-year-old Bagi indigenous resident in Kubwa, a town in Buari area council of the FCT. The visit is also a continuation of the family charts, an initiative of the vice president aimed at interacting with the grassroots in their homes and communities. We we'll take our third commercial. Do stay tuned. Active life with the power of vegetables and fruits. Chivita Active. Be active. Do more. One football confederation. 24 teams, six stadiums, four cities, 504 African stars, one trophy. The Africa Cup of Nations Egypt 2019 comes alive from June 21 with the showpiece final on July 19, 2019. Watch the 52 matches of the tournament live on Africa's biggest and largest television network, NTA, in partnership with Hot Sports. Be part of the biggest soccer fiesta in the African continent as the Super Eagles go on a bold mission to clinch the prestigious title for the fourth time to the excitement of millions of fans across the length and breadth of Nigeria. For inquiries, please contact Obubakar on 0803-331-0175 and Felix on 0803-308-2375. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Welcome back. The Republic of Hungary government and the Nigerian Television Authority has set agenda for partnership in areas of sports and culture. This is part of discussion between the Hungarian ambassador to Nigeria and the director general of the NTA. Rachel Shaibu has details. The history of diplomatic relations between Nigeria and the Republic of Hungary goes back to 1964 when formal diplomatic relations were established. The Republic of Hungary has Memorandum of Understanding with Nigeria on economic and technical development. I think very good uh, together they can uh, do a good. 
Now the Republic of Hungary wants to further ties in sports and culture. And to actualize this, the ambassador, Shamdor Bech, told his host that his country will be cooperating with both Nigerian and European clubs on the field of sports. The other big project will be uh, a gospel uh, festival, actually a cure festival, uh, which, is, um, which could be improved in various fields. Uh, but uh, we would like to do this uh, together with the TV, if it is possible, uh, in a form of a contest. In, Af in Africa, it started in Nigeria. So it is only the Director General of the that, NTA, uh, Yakubu Ibn Muhammad, says the authority have, has maintained uh, the lead in television lead broadcasting and, um, and is willing to collaborate with the Hungarian government. The if there is a cultural agreement between Nigeria and any other country, it is the responsibility of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture you know, to, to, to take care of uh, things. And NTA being part and parcel of that ministry is by implication part and parcel of the implementation of that agreement. With a population of over 9 million people, the country's economy is considered 64th freest in the 2019 index and is rich in culture and sports. In Abuja, Rachel Shaibu, NTA News. Part Sports Update is next with Kene Ima Abudike. Football enthusiasts have taxed Flying Eagles of Nigeria on focus as they go into the round of 16 of FIFA Under-20 World Cup in Poland. The Paul Iwogo coached team progressed as one of three best losers after a 1-1 draw against Ukraine on Thursday. Not uh, really approached games uh, the way we like. They've not hit the ground running. And I think uh, the coach uh, needs to go back to the drawing board to ensure that uh, the team uh, plays well in their subsequent encounter. Meanwhile, a football season that has been characterized by sensational comebacks, goals and drama is set to come down to an all-English battle as Tottenham faced Liverpool in the final of UEFA Champions League in Madrid on Saturday. This will be the first final in history to feature two sides that have failed to win their league titles for a while. The encounter is the second all-English battle since Manchester United beat Chelsea in 2008 in Moscow. In boxing, Anthony Joshua returns to the ring to defend his WBA, IBF and WBL heavyweight titles against Andy Ruiz Jr. at the Madison Square Garden on Saturday. Since beating Vladimir Klitschko, Joshua has defended against Carlos Takam, Joseph Parker and Alexander Povetkin, unifying the WBA, IBF and WBO heavyweight titles along the way to become one of boxing's biggest stars. Saturday's bout will be live on the NTA Sports 24 Channel 270 on Star Times Decoder via Quasi Free Sports. With sports update, Kenan Ima Aburike, NTA News. And on a sad note, President Mohamed Buhari has received with deep sadness notification on the passing away of the President of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Penkerson, Francis Johnson. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media Publicity, Garbashewu, stated that the President joins Penkerson and all labor unions in the country in mourning the visionary leader whose good nature, understanding and forthrightness has helped in improving the welfare of workers and contributed immensely to the stability witness in the oil sector. President Buhari affirms that Johnson's broad-mindedness and generosity of spirit by always putting the nation first before all pecuniary gains shamed, shaped ease of relationship and smooth operations in the oil sector between employers and workers. Recognizing his wise and considerate positions in all negotiations, President Buhari prays that the Almighty God will accept the soul of the departed and comfort the family. The death has also been announced of Mrs. Temitope Epe 